Hi, it's Alexander from Tilda. In this tutorial, I want to show you another kind of step-by-step -step animation in Zero Block. Let's take this page as an example. When you scroll, the elements move and assemble into this nice console. Let's take a look at how this page is made. To do this, let me copy the template ID on the bottom right corner of the page to use this page as a template. I create a new page, scroll all the templates down to the bottom, paste a number into the template ID field, and open that page in my project. All elements and page settings are copied. Let's see how this zero block is set up. We open the block editor. All the elements are here. We're interested in these geometric shapes, which will be animated. To see how they're configured, you need to select the element, open the element settings, and go to the step-by-step -step animation editor at the very bottom. To set up any step-by-step -step animation effect, you need to configure three basic settings, event, steps, and properties. Event is what makes the animation happen. We'll also need the start trigger here. This is the specific place on the page where the animation starts. Steps stands for the animation phases and properties are the element properties that will change at the particular step. Now, I want to show you what the animation of these objects is all about. We see that all of these objects have a start step and a step one. This is the starting step, and this is the first animation step of the elements, the step when they all come together. What changes in step one? We see that this object has shifted by a certain number of pixels on the X and Y axis, and also has zoomed in, which means that the scale has become 200%. And all these changes happened in 600 pixels of scrolling. In other words, while we scroll down 600 pixels, the element changed its size and position. Now I want to explain an important and useful point that will help you understand how to adjust elements if they are located in different places on the page. The top row of elements and the bottom row of elements. This is how they're different. Let's look at event and start trigger first. Start trigger is set to window center, which means that the animation will start when the elements reach the middle of the screen. All elements have the same setting, which means that they start moving at the same time. Now let's take a look at step one. We've already seen this step for the first element. The next element has different values for movement and a different enlargement percentage but the distance is exactly the same, 600 pixels. The yellow element also has different move and scale values, but the distance remains 600 pixels. The circle and the plus objects have the same distance of 600 pixels. Now let's look at the settings for the elements from the bottom row. We've already figured out that their event and start trigger settings are the same as those of the elements from the top row. During step one, the position and size of the element also change, but the distance here is a bit smaller, 400 pixels. That means that the animation takes place during a smaller number of scrolled pixels. All the other elements in the second row also have a distance of 400 pixels. Let's see why this happens. We go back to the finished page and take a look. When the top row of elements reaches the middle of the browser window, they start moving. And after 600 pixels, they will be here. It's very important that the bottom row of elements arrive at the final destination at the same time as the top row of elements. However, the bottom elements start moving later than the ones on top. Their movement starts after 200 pixels, when they reach the middle of the browser window. This means that the total distance 
they will have to travel is shorter by exactly 200 pixels. So we subtract 200 from the top row element's distance of 600 pixels. This difference is the scroll distance on the bottom row stands still. As a result, we get exactly 400 pixels for the bottom row. This is important to remember and to take into account if you are going to animate elements located at different heights on the page. Each element has a first and second position. We assign the element a certain time, distance, and an offset, move. You can specify the offset in numbers, or you can just drag the element on the artboard. It will move in this direction on scroll. I also want to share an easy way to position elements relative to each other. I'll choose the first element, the big white shape, which is located here on its second step. Let me first use the rulers. To add them, use zero block shortcuts. Command plus H adds a horizontal ruler. I drag it to the right position and put the second one at the bottom of the element. Shift plus Command plus H adds a vertical ruler. This is how I mark the dimensions of the element. Now, when I need to put the purple figure on top of the white one, I already know where it has to be, on the second step right here. I do the same with the other elements. I just mark their dimensions using the rulers and adjust the steps accordingly. That's it. Let's publish this page. That's how we've animated all our elements. Thank you for watching. I think it turned out great. Watch other videos about step-by-step -step animation effects in zero block. Good luck and see you soon.